Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tozawa Tanks, back with another video. Today I'm doing a different kind of video. I'm going to be doing a species spotlight, highlighting one of my favorite fish in the hobby, Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Say that three times uh, quickly. Kind of a tongue twister. Um, a lot of people use the name Multis uh, for short um, or Shellies because they are shell dwelling cichlid and they live inside of shells. So um, in, in this video, I will refer to them as either Multis or Shellies as I don't want to say Neolamprologus multifasciatus a bunch of times and and uh, twist, uh, get my tongue all twisted up. So anyway, uh, this is a very interesting fish, a lot of personality. Um, they are endemic to Lake Tanganyika. So they like the same type of water that other Tanganyikan fish uh, like and require. So higher pH um, anywhere, I would say probably as low as maybe 7.5 to 7.8 on the low side, but really they like to have it, um, you know, above eight. So you know, 8.5 to even nine is acceptable for these fish. So if you have very soft water, you're gonna have to buffer it and um, make sure that you can raise the pH. Um, I'm very lucky where I live um, in San Francisco, California. Um, the water that I happen to have um, out of our tap is um, very high on the pH side. So it comes out of my tap higher than 8.0. And um, I have aragonite as a substrate, so that helps to uh, maintain the elevated pH levels. And then I also use a uh, Tanganyikan, a Lake Tanganyikan buffer um, when doing water changes in this tank. I have these fish paired with some Cyprochromus leptosoma uh, for a couple of reasons. The Shelleys uh, really um, like to stay on the bottom of the tank. They like to be near their shells where they form colonies. So um, the males will establish a territory with a bunch of shells. Um, the male will entice the females to come down to the shells and then they'll form a colony. And they basically, they live in the shells. You know, they, uh, they spawn in them, they, the fry live in them, they sleep in them. And then if they get startled or anything, they zip right, right back down to the shells and uh, stay in the shells um, until that danger is passed. So the Cyprochromus that I have them paired with are a um, mid to high water fish. So it kind of balances the tank out and the other thing that it does is um, it has the effect of making the shellies feel safe, the multis feel safe because uh, when they see other fish out and about above them that are small like them, they have a tendency to know and feel that it's safe. And so they'll, they'll come out of their shells a lot more than if they were um, just in their tank alone or if there were larger fish in there that um, would scare them. They are... Uh, pretty tough. They're probably one of the toughest fish um, pound for pound or gram for gram that you're going to find. Um, for, for a fish that's anywhere from one inch to an inch and three quarters, maybe two inches on a big male, as you can see there up top, um, you know, they can really hold their own. They, they've known to chase off fish, you know, many times their size. Um, so they are not to be messed with in their little area. But they are really interesting. Um, they're very easy to breed if, if you have the right water parameters. As you can see in this, uh, you know, in my tank here, there is fry all over the place and in various uh, stages. So um, again, you know, because they have their shells, they uh, really do a good job of protecting their, their young and uh, the young have a, a place to uh, hide and retreat to right away. Um, it's, you know, it's a really fun fish to keep, um, a lot of personality. Uh, it's really fun to watch them move the substrate around and create their territories and m literally move the shells and pick items up and, you know, get them out of the way. Um, it, you know, it brings a lot of enjoyment. It's also very enjoy enjoyable to, you know, see kind of the full, you know, the, li the life cycle when you see a fish that um, spawns and you see fry that are hatched and then you see the fry grow up, it really uh, brings a lot of enjoyment to the hobby. So I love this fish. I, you know, I'm, I'm really into African cichlids, obviously, but this is a different type of African cichlid that I like to keep. And uh, I just get a lot of enjoyment from um, watching them, looking at their personalities, looking at the fry, and uh, watching them with their territorial battles as the males will kind of uh, 
you know, gesture and posture and, and uh, kind of, you know, back each other up and uh, watching the females interact with them. And then also really watching how the uh, females will care for the young and protect their young. So a very enjoyable fish. Um, one of my favorites. I really love this uh, part of the hobby and, and uh, I've had a lot of enjoyment from keeping these fish. Um, you don't really find these fish in a lot of pet stores. Typically you're going to want to, um, you know, search for a reputable breeder or, you know, someone in the hobby through your local fish club that might have some. Um, and because they breed so quickly and, and, and so, uh, so rapidly, you know, it's, it's very easy to get fry from a good source um, as they grow out. So um, I will actually put a link to the, um, the breeder that I got these from. It's a breeder called Gyler Aquatics. And uh, so I'll put a link to their website um, in case you are interested in these fish. And uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I think, you know, adults are probably like eight or nine dollars a piece. You know, you're going to want to get several um, to form a colony, eight or nine or ten. And you can start them in, in as little as a 10 gallon tank. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe. Please like and uh, love to read your comments. Thanks for watching.